Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through all the different types of calculations involving moles and masses that you need to be able to do for GCSE Chemistry. Now there are a lot of numbers involved in this, so this is the bit that makes most people hate GCSE Chemistry, but there's actually only a couple of different types of questions that can come up on this, and it's really simple to just learn a few rules and then you'll be able to answer all the questions on moles. So in this video we'll go through some of the different variations that come up, and hopefully you'll be really confident in answering these types of questions. Okay, so you've probably realised that in chemistry there are a lot of calculations, and lots of these calculations involve moles. So one mole means we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. So when we're talking about moles, we're talking about how many particles we have in a certain mass of a substance. Now, obviously particles are really, really small. So say in my hand I had a lump of carbon, there are going to be a lot of particles in my hand. So that's why this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23, is written as a power of 10. So it's written as standard form. And that's just because to actually say how many particles we have is going to be a massive number with so many zeros. So we shorten it down and write in standard form to make it a little bit easier to use. Now you'll notice that I've used the word particles, which is quite vague. Now, when we say particle, we could be talking about atoms, ions, molecules, or really anything similar. So this word particle just means almost like a unit. So if I had one mole of hydrogen atoms, we're talking about having 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of these atoms. But if I said I've got one mole of water molecules, I'm talking about having 6.02 times 10 to the 23 whole water molecules. Now, obviously, water molecules involve hydrogen atoms, but because we're using the word mole to describe the whole molecule this time, we're talking about having 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of whole molecules. So that's why I've used this word particle. It's just a generic unit to use for each of these things. So to calculate moles, you need to divide the mass by the relative mass. So I always think that the mass on the top is the real life mass. So this is going to be in grams. And then the relative mass is the number on the periodic table that tells you how heavy the atom is in relation to other atoms. So let's say we had 12 grams of carbon. And carbon's relative atomic mass is 12 on the periodic table. So to find how many moles of carbon I've got, I'd do 12 divided by 12, which gets me one mole. So if I had 12 grams of carbon in my hand, I have one mole of this carbon. So that means in my hand, I've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms. So when we're working out moles of atoms, that's quite straightforward. But what about if I was asking to find the moles in 9 grams of carbon dioxide? Now, I'm going to rewrite the mole equation. So moles equals mass over relative mass. So my mass is nine grams, so I can instantly put that on the top. But when I go searching for carbon dioxide on my periodic table to find the relative mass, hopefully you realize that carbon dioxide can't actually exist on the periodic table. And that's because it's made up of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So carbon and oxygen will be on the periodic table because they're elements, but carbon dioxide, which is a molecule made up of these elements, won't be. So to actually find the relative mass of this whole carbon dioxide molecule, we have to add the relative mass of our one carbon atom to the relative mass of our two oxygen atoms. So I do 12, add 16, add 16. So I've taken these numbers off the periodic table and added them together. And you might see this written as a relative formula mass, which is just the relative mass of a compound. So this gets me 44. So my relative mass of carbon dioxide is going to be 44. So I'm going to do 9 divided by 44, uh, which gets us 0 0.205 moles of carbon dioxide. So then if I wanted to find how many particles I've got, I'd do 0 0.205 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which gets me 1.23 times 10 to the 23. So this is how many particles I have in nine grams of carbon dioxide. 
Now, in this example, the particles I'm talking about are molecules of carbon dioxide. So we're not talking about the individual carbon atoms or the oxygen atoms. We're talking about how many whole molecules we have. Now, so that's the basics of moles. Now, when moles actually become really useful is when we can use them in equations. So if I wrote out a chemical equation, let's say we've got aluminium plus oxygen is going to make aluminium oxide. Now, the big numbers that we've used to balance this equation actually work as a mole ratio. So we can actually say we're reacting four moles of aluminium with three moles of oxygen to make two moles of aluminium oxide. So this works in a four to three to two ratio. And this is really, really useful because it means if we have information about one of these things, we can find the moles and use it to work out information about another thing in our equation. So let's say we started with 10 grams of aluminium. And I want to find out how many grams of aluminium oxide this is going to make. Well, I can start by finding my moles of aluminium. I would do 10 divided by the relative atomic mass of aluminium, which is 27, which is going to get me 0 0.370 moles. So this is how many moles of aluminium I've got. Now, I know that my chemical equation is in a 4 to 3 to 2 ratio. So my aluminium is 0 0.370 moles. And to get to aluminium oxide, I'm going to need to divide it by 2. Because to get from 4 to 2 in this ratio, I just need to divide my moles by 2. So dividing 0 0.370 by 2 is going to get me 0 0.185. So I've just used these big numbers, which work in a ratio, and I've divided my moles to get how many moles of aluminium oxide I've got. So now I know that I've got 0 0.185 moles of aluminium oxide. So hopefully you can see that we didn't know anything about aluminium oxide at the start. But because we knew something about our normal aluminium, we could work out the moles and then use our ratio to start finding out information about our aluminium oxide. Now, if I rewrite the mole equation now, so moles is mass over relative mass, and I put it in a formula triangle, we want to find out how much actual mass we've made of aluminium oxide. So that's our real life number that goes on the top. So I can times my moles, so 0 0.185, by the relative mass of aluminium oxide, which is going to be 102, from adding up the relative masses of my two aluminium atoms and my three oxygen atoms. And then if I times these together, I get 18.87 grams. So if I start with 10 grams of aluminium and I react it with oxygen, we form 18.87 grams of aluminium oxide. Now, the very last calculation involving mass is working out empirical formula. So the empirical formula is just the simplest ratio of atoms in a compound. So let's say we had glucose, which is C6H12O6. Hopefully you realise that all of these numbers are divisible by 6. So we can actually say that the empirical formula is CH2O. Because all I've done is found the simplest ratio and simplest way to write these three numbers. And I've divided them all by six to get C1H2O1. And then obviously we don't write the one because we don't need to in chemistry. So that's the general idea of empirical formula. We're finding the simplest ratio. Now, it's quite easy if they just give you a compound and just ask you to simplify it down. But if they actually give you masses, we need to do something with moles to be able to find this empirical formula. So we've got 12 grams of titanium and 8 grams of oxygen. So I know I've got titanium and oxygen going on. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to draw a table. And on one side I'm going to put my titanium and on the other I'm going to put my oxygen. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm always going to find the moles of each one. So to find my moles of titanium I'm going to do my mass which is 12 grams divided by the relative atomic mass, which they've given us down here. But if they hadn't have given it to us, we could have gone and found it on the periodic table. So I'm doing 12 divided by 48, which gets me 0 0.25 moles. And then to find my moles of oxygen, we're doing 8 grams over 16. And when I divide these, it gets me 0 0.5 moles. 
Now, now that I've found the moles of each one, I'm going to divide them both by my smallest answer. So my smallest answer out of 0 0.25 and 0 0.5 is 0 0.25. So I'm going to divide both of these answers by 0 0.25. So 0 0.25 over 0 0.25 gets 1. And 0 0.5 over 0 0.25 gets me 2. So now I've actually found a ratio of my titanium to oxygen. So for every one titanium atom, I have two oxygen atoms. So this means my empirical formula has to be TiO2, which just means one titanium atom and two oxygen atoms. I really hope this video helped you feel a little bit more confident with some of these calculations that come up in chemistry. If it did, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and like the video. I recommend now that you go and practice as many questions as you can on this to really make sure you're as confident as you can be ready for the exam.